All right, guys, Red Alert 2 World Series action coming at you. And today I have possibly the best match I have ever streamed in my entire life. This was our Pro Red Alert 2 finals from last month between Marco, AKA the greatest player to ever do it, facing off against Quas. Now Quas definitely the underdog here, but he took down some big names to get into these finals. And today he sets out to prove that he deserves to be discussed as one of the best players in the world. This one gets crazy. Let's go. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, this looks like one of those uh, generic, basic maps, kind of like Dorado, right? Where you're going to see a shitload of uh, yeah. war factories. There's not a lot of close quarters, not a lot of choke points, which usually f uh, helps players like make super weapons and stuff to protect super weapons. So in these open maps like this, usually you start seeing more uh, multi-war. Uh, so I'm assuming that that's usually what happens in these games most more often than not. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and, I mean, you can see, I mean, obviously some good patches early on. There's a couple early, these gem patches, moving to these gem patches, certainly viable, trying to get control of the center into the mid-late game. But yeah, certainly a position where you could definitely mass some wars. Um, yeah, that is a sad potato. Tansy with the follow. Thanks, buddy, appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so any of you guys, we, we've talked about a lot, and maybe you guys don't know, and you guys who are a little more outside of the scene, but the 2v2 clan ladder is now live. So we have a quick match system where you can outside of the tournaments. You can go on CNC net. Ooh, does get a drone in that minor service depot right there, no problem. Yeah, so you can go on, You can, in quick match, you can match other people, play 1v1 games, any time of the day or night, it's a lot of fun. So quick match is always awesome. There's Blitz, there's Red Alert 2 and Yuri's Revenge. I recommend playing that, redalert2.com. You can get the video to download the game and figure out how to play quick match. As of last week, we now have a 2v2 clan ladder. So you and your friends can join a clan or your people you don't know, you can connect with people, join clans, play 2v2 games. It's been hyped up and demanded for so long. Everyone's been asking Berg to make this for so long. It's finally here, Ed. I know you were one of the people that was excited about it. Is it is it everything you wanted and more? Is it living up to your dreams? <laughs> Uh, of course, man. I mean, it's a it's a really nice actually touch to what we used to have uh, because back then there was no there was no such thing as two v two quick match plan ladder, right? Uh, and now you can just queue up and you get matched. Before you had to make games or custom lobbies, uh, host the map, host the game, right. host, wait for people to join you. So it's a little bit different, but honestly, a lot better like this. Uh, custom lobby would be okay as well, but hey, I'm not complaining. Yeah, quick match is super nice, super nice. Yeah, the quick match system, I think the only issue with the quick match system is right now just the, the numbers, right? I mean, obviously quick match would be, it's the perfect system if we had like a lot of people, but as we slowly grow and take over the world, I think that'll help sort itself out as well once we get that Red Bull sponsorship. Speaking of money coming in, Rick Dangerous with the sub, my guy. Subs, subs in, man. Puts us closer to our goal, that $2 million donation from Red Bull. They see the subs coming in, they're like, damn, this guy's got it. He's got a collared shirt on, serious business. Let's give him $2 million. <laughs> then we get to the moon. So. All right, so let's do a little <laughs> quick little minor count here. Nine miners for Quas at the moment. And then we have well, how many? Let's see, six, seven, eight, nine miners for Marco. But Marco's already getting the gems. So uh, as far as the map control goes, uh, I think this is a little bit more in favor of Marco. He's on five war factories as well already. Jesus Christ. Yeah, and so this is interesting, Marco. I mean, so this is Quas's, uh, Quas's map pick. Uh, now and then that MCV moves from Marco. So Quas is map pick, but Marco seems a bit more comfortable. Well, it's just very different, right? Quas not doing the MCV move and base stretching instead. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is this is Marco's build is super nice here. If you look yeah. at his money right now, he's not bottoming. Look at Quas. He's getting there. He's getting so close. He needs those gems to uh, to get a little bit above water there. His head's barely trying to stay afloat. Marco though, 5k in the bank. He's on a new patch of gems. He already has three miners on it on the bottom left. And he already mined the top ones. Uh, though, and Quas hasn't touched either of his sets yet. Yeah, so Marco, I mean, and that's the story of the economy. That time bottoming out like that so unfortunate uh it's it's difficult to estimate oftentimes you look at a game like this and if you weren't looking at their money it'd be difficult to know you're like oh everything seems so similar but it's the story of the finances here quas is bottoming out his production is going to show it and now you're seeing it it is being reflected in the rhino numbers um uh yeah but well quas actually God, the, the rhinos seem about God, I have such a hard time with this many rhinos. It's not that significant right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah, looks like Marco's slightly ahead here in the uh, minor count. Uh, fodder looks like he's. They're both about the same on fodder, but Marco Qua did end up winning that fodder fight. Quas gonna. Uh, Quas is barracks. Both both players barracks right next door, right there. Yeah. So fodder keeps coming out here. Pretty even fight here so yeah, far. Yeah, and Quas Quas actually Quas is looking pretty good here, honestly. I, that that was kind of surprising me. I thought Marco. I thought I I, I miscalculated. Well, I guess it was pretty even early on. Maybe I mean little things like that. Mosh is like that. 
Uh, you, there's there's some randomness involved, obviously, the clicking, the micro, but little things can make a difference there. But very, that was one of the most even fights I've ever seen. Like, they both, yeah, they like... basically <laughs> thinned out their armies. <laughs> yeah. Should we both chop off one hand and then continue to fist fight? I like it. <laughs> oh, these miners? Oh, these well, those miners were going for the ore, now we pulled them back. Is he about to fodder these miners and make... Quas going for it here. Conscript's out now for both players. Yeah, that's that's really cool. And then here's the thing, though. I was oh, going to say, sold. when are the Desolators going to come out? Yeah. But both players sold MCVs already. Oh, so both, oh, oh, both players, no MCVs, no radars. So this is a, uh, yeah, Conscripts. Bring the Conscripts. No no Desolators. I think Quas, I feel like Quas has this. The, those Conscripts do a lot, or they absorb a lot yeah. of tank hits. So, oh. yeah, I think that might have actually done it. The, the Connies were the trick right there. And he somehow comes out ahead there. Very nice by him. So now we're going to start seeing the running around here. What is Marco going to be able to do here? Oh. Both players are going to probably start spamming drones. Uh, Marco doesn't have much money, though, so his drone production is going to be really slow here. And Quas has a lot of tanks to handle. And you see Quas, Quas amputating a little bit. Sold off a War Factory to keep some money in the bank. I love that move right now. Selling off a few buildings to keep things pumping. And Quas actually didn't switch to drones. He's still pumping Rhino. Look at Quas way ahead now. Yeah, Marco, yeah. yeah. That was interesting. I, yeah, I thought, uh, yeah, I really, I kind of, I thought Marco was getting a leg up there in the middle, but um, very, very even engagements. And then, like you said, the the, the, the fodder fight ultimately in the middle there, uh, what what swung it there for Quas? Yeah, in those situations, I mean, yeah, dog dog spam is super nice, of course. And the, the reason why dog spam is so nice uh, instead of Connie's is because you want to go from point, one, point A to point B of the map, you can go and they'll follow you with you at this at the speed of your tanks but if you spam connie's they're so slow so they'll be way behind your tanks in this situation where they're yeah. like fighting right next door to each other connie's are the choice they'll take out the dogs and you don't have to walk around you know yeah yep yeah yeah that makes yeah it makes sense and i think a lot of players are especially in traditional now in blitz you see you see conscripts a lot more for that reason quas is droned here he's not evicting the drone which is kind of driving me crazy and marco holy shit okay so both players in pretty rough financial positions, Quas has an AFK miner. Both players mining dirt, uh, and the show goes on here, Ed. Yeah, Quas does have the miners though. If he wanted to, he could send a couple uh, miners long distance mining to the gems. Though it might be a little risky, just because Marco does have drones hanging around. So, uh, he, and there's no depots in the field either. So, or Marco has a depot. Oh, Marco Quas doesn't. So. Yeah. If Marco sends a couple drones and tries to pick off the miners, he can actually make that work for him. Yeah, uh, two two war factories to one. You know what's huge right now is the barracks. Marco only has one barracks and it's a bit exposed. If La if Quas was able to get uh, find a way downfield or find a way to snipe that, that could that could really swing the game. Then he could go defensive and try to forward to slow things down. As it stands, Marco creeping up the field now. Quas losing that uh, that expansion towards the middle now, selling off the buildings that he can to keep things pumping. And yeah. Mark Quas gonna Quas, bring the Quas, miners. Quas, he needs to bring the miners. He needs That's to bring how, the yeah, miners. I was gonna say. He has to bring the miners. Uh, Marco pushing in yep. without his uh, fodder though. Fodder was in the yeah. back of the tanks, like we talked about. If oh. those if those Connies were in the front though, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the conscripts versus dogs. It's very interesting because in traditional, you know, players are so bona fide. It's almost always dogs, right? I mean, the dogs are almost always the move when being used as fodder. But like you said, in that position like that, two barracks, you know, that little standoff in that trench, bring the conscripts in. You know, you don't need their speed. But then in the late game there, you saw the conscripts fumble, not being able to keep up with the dogs. Very, very well played. That was get to Woody level. Then we'll be like, OK, I don't know if there's more room to grow. <laughs> yeah, and I think and, and I think that's now. a great point, Ed, because really what you're talking about is like is like you know, you cut diamonds with diamonds. And so oftentimes what holds back like the best, like whoever the best is, you can at least get as good as them. So Quas is not on Woody's level, right? So Quas can at least get to Woody's level and then to be the person who goes above what's already there. But as long as there's someone better, you can always emulate, you can always try to get to that level, you know, play off of them, doing what they're doing, competing with them, and that'll bring you up. Like, what I think Woody kind of coming into the scene and showing us how much higher the level could be, it made everyone around him better. And even people who don't play him, I feel like the game as a whole at the top level kind of got better in that way. Um, but Quas, certainly, I mean, he takes months off at a time if he was in full commit mode um i think we, we i think he, he could certainly get better you know i think it's hours spent is certainly the uh the metric yeah for sure and the th the, the difference between the uh chinese players and the west players i guess i'll call them uh is the fact that chinese players actually 
uh, for from what I understand. Uh, they treat this more as the, their job, not their hobby. Right. <laughs> there's a lot of them that are constantly playing. There's tournaments that are like thousand yeah. dollars. There's tournaments every freaking day. There's show matches. All that. there's hell of money to be earned. And I think at one point, uh, Woody had uh, somebody announced how much Woody had made in a year, and it was it was a lot. It was a lot of money, you know. So they take this game a little bit more serious than we do. You know, they grind. For You're sure. right. It's very the culture of it's very 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 different. Uh, Fish with the sub. Thanks, Rick. Did I thank you for the sub. I think I did. Thanks for the sub, guys. Um, yeah, the culture of it's very, very different, and that's money, right? The money and the seriousness that can be put in. I mean, the, the Chinese players are grinding at a level unprecedented. I mean, for us, I feel like a lot of, I mean, Red Alert 2 at the top level is like a lot of kind of like these, you know, older guy, you know, like kind of older people who like, you know, have, you know, more, a little more casual, I guess, in a lot of ways. But yeah, these, the Chinese players, I feel like maybe are a little younger, or at least it seems like, it seems like they're, they're grinding at like the call, like college kid more of time spent level, and it, um, it certainly reflects, but that's one of those things too. If the game grows and m more money comes in, it could certainly help justify it. I mean, I think there's players like Zane, for example, that you know, top level player, but he goes and plays Valorant or whatever. Uh, I always feel like I'm saying that name wrong, just because you know, there's Valorant, more money, yeah. there's more people, that's more worth his time in some ways. So hopefully, as the game grows, we can you know see the player skill level and the player base of top level players grow as well. Uh, Ed, what are we seeing yeah. in this game? Uh, oh, well, Marco got the Marco got the center control, and we're actually seeing Quas go Korea. I don't even think we talked about that. Yeah, yeah, Quas nice. oh, yeah. is casually Korea. We're stuck. As soon as Woody comes up, we forget what else is going on. Okay, so both <laughs> players, I love that this on this map. Amphibious transport your MCV to the island. Both players doing it simultaneously. Um, it's funny. It's so funny to see both players copy a strategy that seems kind of wacky like that, or to see a map like this where a wacky strategy becomes so bona fide. And that's right. Yeah, Quas playing Korea here. Uh, good allied map, Ed, you think? Um, I think for the sake that, okay, naval, naval, allied favor. The fact that you can teleport your miners to the island, allied, allied flavored. Uh, but it is, it's, it's a nice map overall, but I feel like it might be a little more favored toward allied just because of those points. Yeah, Doesn't mean that Soviet is out of the game though. Look at, look at Marco's positioning right now in the center. He has ground control. He has the airport. And we've seen, I've seen some really freaking good games from Soviet players here who take out the allied players. Yeah, and I think I think Marco playing his opponent very nicely here. He knows he's allied, so he knows he has to dominate. He can't give up map control. Um, it's going to be very difficult. There's a lot of choke points. I mean, look at these choke points to attack over. Uh, does make it tough as the Soviet player. So certainly early game, you need to establish yourself, take control of the map, get your finan for finances rolling, and deny the airport certainly as well. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> yeah, because. Quas, yeah, Quas. Yeah, Quas is doing. He's doing all right here. Actually, going on second ASC, so he's looking to snipe buildings eventually. Oh. You get uh, five five eagles. You can start sniping refineries, and you can start sniping uh, war factories as well. Four eagles are still good enough to snipe out the bar or the barracks for three eagles, and the power plants with four eagles. So he's looking to get some buildings here. Uh, once the uh, battle goes onto the water, though, I think that's when Quas is going to probably or should take charge. But it looks like Marco has the subs attacking Quas's uh, naval yard at the moment. Oh yeah, so destroyers to counter the subs. Yeah, and this is a um, this game's interesting. You know, so many games in, in regular Red Alert 2, especially you know, you see this kind of early game. Both players just setting themselves up, nothing too crazy, building up for the climax. This game specifically, there are so many mm. odd tactical things to consider: the island move, the tech on the map, cutting off choke points, getting on. <laughs> like, there's so look much. At this, look at, look, yeah. Marco prepping himself to go down the yep. other side. Oh. That, the paradrop comes in, he NGs the, the NGs, and now a Tanya out from Quas. This is a lot of rhinos, and the conscripts as well. This is a little bit scary, but Tanya to clean up the conscripts, I like that. Eh, it doesn't really get the job yeah, done. Yeah, Tanya goes, Tanya goes down immediately. Yeah. Uh, Quas needs to invest in some fodder. He needs dogs in front of his life ne right now. A lot of, like, right now. A lot of grizzlies, though, but yeah, and, and Quas, Quas the aggressor here, and Marco on the run. Quas. And, yeah, Quas. Wow. Nice. And a couple nice pillboxes there. He had good grizzly numbers, but um, that's one of those ones where if you look at that attack, you're like, well, look how many grizzlies he has. Grizzlies will melt like that. The pillboxes, the fodder, little stuff like that. The Tanya move was funny. Didn't get anything done. Um, hey, nice defense. Yeah, and these uh, these eagles uh, usually missing a lot, but uh, does get a couple tanks there, or snipes one tank for sure. And he's been he's been on it with his eagles. The eagles have been like going around the map this entire time too. 
Yes. Uh, dolphins. I hear a dolphins blowing up here and there. <laughs> and some dolphins getting blown up. Yeah, the eagles and the eagles lapping on these rhinos. And uh, we've talked about that before. You know, mid mid late game, uh, picking off rhinos with your eagles is so. Uh, it takes such discipline. It's so much fun to go downfield and do something cool with them. But using them to chip away at these rhinos certainly getting good value. That you see Tanya. Cross no, the Tanya, that Tanya doing work. Yeah, the Tanya in the water doing work. And Tanya, and you saw what Quas did there, right? So Marco had conscripts, so you saw Quas bring the tanks away from the conscripts using his mobility to, to take advantage of Quas, the fact that Marco has conscripts instead of dogs here. Uh, very, very nice. And Quas's unit control here, that's what's so difficult to appreciate and so hard for kind of a, a non-top level player to even appreciate the artistry that goes into these engagements uh, with the tanks and the decision making like that. The micro, as we call it. And... Yeah. Uh, at quas it, it, just it's yeah exactly the micro and the composure i feel like you have to mention the composure here because when when he gets ahead in the tank fight a little bit he doesn't stick to it right he kind of pulls back and he stays behind his pillboxes he doesn't yep. want to throw and that's one of the mistakes that a lot of allied players do they feel like oh god i, I i'm winning this fight i'm gonna continue and once you sometimes do that you end up throwing the tank fight at all completely you know and yeah. Marco's really good at punishing you in those situations. So Quas doing an excellent job keeping composed, staying around his base so he can continue p spamming pillboxes, staying behind those pillboxes, and then pushing in. Yeah, I think that's yeah, that's that's yeah, that's a great point, Quas. And 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 you see it now. Yeah, had Quas take gotten a little greedy, he'd be even in a worse position. But even now, you look at Marco keeping this aggression on and the base walk over that uh that little stream there. So now Marco has the sentry advantage as the attacker, which is obviously always a beautiful thing to have. And Quas still lapping with the with the uh, with the eagles. Quas on 5K could maybe build. Oh, he's gonna be brings Rockies into the fight. Ah, very interesting. These conscripts are so annoying, though. Marco doing a great in the forward barracks and the flat oh, cannon. <laughs> the flat cannon there. That is going to be a strong flat cannon. Holy shit. Now, should should Quas be considering going over to Mirage tanks right now? He's got 3K in the bank. Marco on 10K. This is tough now they with the base so walk. They, they build, Mirage tanks build so slow. He's on, he needed Mirage tanks. He yeah. needed them a little bit earlier. At this point, you'd be just slowing your uh, Grizzly production. And right now, you need them. If yeah. anything, he needs, he needs fodder. He needs fodder in front of his line. But the radar now comes out for Marco. So Desolators are going to be there this. to counter in case he does bring fodder. Tough. And Quas going all the way in. The sentry gun guns. Does come out. The sentry guns, yeah. though. This is tough. And you see Quas, Quas did so many defensive things right, but we've talked about it before, right? There's a difference between defending and staying alive and no, really no offensive value, right? His Eagles did a great job controlling the Rhino numbers, wasn't able to he get has five. He has five Eagles. He can use those Eagles and snipe out that flat cannon in one shot too, and then oh, continue the harassment that. on the tanks. Why is there, but is there a position here? I mean, Quas just, Quas on one war factor, he's going broke. Marco, 8K, is there, I mean, Marco just relentless here really really hard for Quas and which is unfortunate because some really beautiful defense but Marco just Marco just relentless here yeah um, he's all over Quas. Quas here dude that was that was a really fun game <laughs> that was sick from both players um yeah and it really you know it really takes when we talk about that right like the diamonds you know using diamonds to cut diamonds good players making great players even better and you saw that there from marco like for most players marco would have rolled through and just won that game right but the fact that quas brought that incredible grizzly defense it forced marco to bring that really clever base walk you know what i mean so like because quas yeah. defended so well we got to see this incredible even higher level offensive maneuver from marco uh both these players bringing out the best in each other you love to see it anyway so over to point number four now. Uh, so back to Soviet versus Soviet for these guys. And yeah, so it was interesting. Like, so Ed, we were talking about, you know, uh, Quas's ability there with the Grizzlies to not like get a little bit ahead and then recklessly charge down and lose all of his Grizzlies, right? And so that was, you know, good defense. But then at the same time, of course, he didn't get any offensive value. So that's why oftentimes with Allied, we talk about it just being a razor thin margin. Like, yeah, when you get ahead, you can't go reckless, but maybe you do need to take a little bite, get some value. And, um, and we're talking about splitting hairs. I mean, it's just so difficult to do. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing, though. You got sometimes you got to play that game, right? If he was his intention was to defend, what are you defending for? Are you going to defend to win, like the rest of the game? Uh, usually, you defend so that you can have a carrier on yeah. the other side doing his damage, right? Like you have to have some kind of offensive value or some rocketeers harassing on the other side. That's a great blah, point. Blah 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 blah. Whatever you know. Yeah, that that's a perfect point. I think I think Quas was playing the perfect game to have uh, a naval offensive presence, right? He was, and he, the Eagles were being used for the tanks. So, um, and you know what? Maybe his plan was, 
he was thinking he'd be able to get ahead enough to use the Eagles offensively. That might have been his plan, to use the Eagles to slow down buildings, but then he got he caught himself having to use them against the Rhinos, and then I think you're right, yeah. the pivot over to Naval to maintain some level of offensive presence to slow down Marco's production could have easily uh, won that game. But either way, um, an absolute uh, work of art does get a drone in. Um, yeah, really nice. And what do they say? Uh, what does Mike Tyson say? Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> and who would have expected Marco to come in down your throat with a bunch of connors and a flat cannon right in your bay, like your doorstep, <laughs> literally right outside your goddamn war factory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely right. And that's why it's you know so easy. We're all sitting around in our underwear on Sunday eating popcorn, telling Marco and Quas what they should do, man. These guys are in the fight of their life. Another drone gets yeah. in, so Quas a surgeon right now. Uh, and he's going to, yeah, he drives all the way to the service depot. Okay. Uh, Nies, Nies, 88 with the follow. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. You come right, John. Okay, so man, and this dude is three points into this best of nine, man. These guys are giving us nonstop action. Yeah, you, you, you absolutely love to see it. And the Korea move from Quas alone, uh, interesting. I mean, certainly these guys playing so much Soviet. Uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's fun to see. So this map, nice close quarter combat. These starting oils give early positions. Uh, any, any specific notes here on this one, Ed? Ed? Oh, out. It's pretty straightforward. Oh. Sorry, I was taking a bite. <laughs> and you're eating right now? Here. You're eating during the finals, Dude, Ed? Come look on. at the show. Look at the show, man. It's such a great show. <laughs> yeah. I have to eat, put something in my mouth, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, Not exactly don't get carried away. Sure you Anyways. <laughs> you're literally eating a sandwich while we while we tell Quas what he should be doing better. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Ed, the wild card, they say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, man, okay, so what do we have? Two War Factories, Marco, or... Boss on two war factories. Both players on two war factories. Marco moving his MCV already. He's always he always seems like he's always like a step ahead, doesn't he? Like his his macro gameplay is like always a little bit ahead of others for some reason. But it didn't work out on the game before uh, Fjord. Yeah, that's true. Out this game. Yeah, so he brings and so. And Quas again, maybe different mentalities. Here we saw a similar thing last. Quas going for more of a walk before the early MCV move, but yeah, Marco you're gonna bring, brings that early MCV move. It's an interesting calculation, of course, when you're moving your MCV, you're not building buildings, so it's always that that consideration. Is it better to walk? Is it better to move the MCV? And it's uh, it's difficult to appreciate the prep work and the time that goes in, and that's why you know these maps that these guys know so well. Talked about it before the build order down cell by cell with these guys, um, and it's what's that? What's the ooh? He sold, Mar oh. Marco sold MCV. Uh, he's heavily out. I feel like he's out tanked right now. Not heavily, but he's out tanked a little bit right now. So he builds a third war factory, sells MCV. So here we go. Quas sees it and matches it. Third war factory comes out and also sells his MCV. So that's it. No more uh, buildings. Yeah, and it's interesting. I think. Oh, this... oh look at Marco Tengi. Look at Marco. Sorry, I'm sorry. He, what? He, sni he snipes the oil. Quas' oil is now. Oh, uh, Marco. oh no! I was, I was right there. I'm like, damn, I'm missing this. I was right there and I still missed it. So, wait, was, did that engineer just go on foot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just hoofed yeah. it over there? Dude. Quas is coming and he's going to get it back. Okay. <laughs> Those are the engineers from the MCV. Sentry that fucking thing. Be so <laughs> annoying. Okay, so here comes the big engagement. We've talked about this before. This sp specific move, we'll see it. We've seen it before. We'll see it again. One player goes to their third war factory, then they sell the MCV, and the other player has to match it. If you don't match, if you continue to produce, you're going to lose the battle, and it's so risky. I mean, you don't have to match it, but oftentimes you will. And in that case, it's a little bit tricky if the, the other player has now set the tempo. You know, maybe Quas didn't want to do that this game, but Marco said, "Hey, we're doing this. Hey, we're selling MCVs." Quas feels like he has mm. to to keep up, and now it's going to crescendo into one climactic battle here. Now, Neither player splitting off, so it's just going to be a big bang out. Uh, dogs, and now some conscripts for Quas as well. Marco going broke, so Quas. Uh, and Marco gets on the higher ground here. Quas needs to be a little bit careful, does not want to engage up that hill. Quas with a huge fodder advantage. Holy oh. sh. Yeah, Quas literally has all the fodder in the field, oh, basically. Marco cleans them all up, though, but Quas, yeah, Quas now way ahead, now has Marco on the retreat. Marco with no money, so no reinforcements. Marco was Marco was almost broke the last 40 seconds. That makes a big difference. Quas was able to keep producing, big fodder advantage. Um, I liked Marco's kind of hill placement there towards the end, but big fodder advantage. Quas still producing into that late uh, that late uh, situation there. Quas yeah, pulls that it out. that was really nice. Allied versus Soviet, particularly in RA2, because in Yuri's Revenge, a lot of players go straight into tech tanks, of course. But uh, regular Red Alert 2, watching players like uh, like Frank, of course, right? Like watching Frank run his Grizzlies into Rhinos, uh, so, so impressive. And, and what we saw from Quas in that game and what we've seen Rhinos versus Rhinos as well, uh, very impressive. Yeah, me missing stuff. I know, you guys, man, that, uh, that oil right in front of me. You know what it is, though? My monitor's too big. Like, to switch from one corner to this corner, I'm moving my entire head. 
Uh, I swear, <laughs> man, like when I'm on my phone, I'm like, I'm like, I'm when I rewatch games, I'm like, dude, how did I miss that? It's this big ass monitor. And then when I'm in here too, I'm like, I'm watching audio levels and like trying to keep track of like, I'm like doing so much random shit, man. But um, and then Red Alert 2, I, Blitz has spoiled me. So that's all three of my different excuses. But man, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm really, I got a, I got a regular Red Alert 2. I'm, I have to like really, really dial this fucking thing in. Uh, now, who do no, you think the this thing, map the thing is? <laughs> Sorry, well, I was going to say, on, to, to add to what you were saying, it is, it's not even just your fault. The thing is, there's sometimes these high-level players, uh, it's hard to keep up with everything that they're doing because usually they're, well, in some games, they're going like four-way yeah. splits while base trading at the same time and spamming drones in the back end and then engineering, engineering <laughs> oils as you, you know, you're gonna, you're bound to miss one of those attacks the players do. You know, that's that's the crazy part about it. Yeah, yeah, it really, it's, it's man, these guys, yeah, I just get, I get absolutely bamboozled. Um, what, who do you think? Yeah, who, uh, who, what do you think, Ed? Marco. Who do you think this one's? Who do you think this one's favoring here? Marco, dude. Uh, Marco is really good on maps like this here. Uh, Arctic Circle, I feel like, is one of his strongest maps as well. <clears throat> I feel like I've played him and known him a long time to know which ones are like his go-to maps. Uh, and this is this is one of them. He's super strong here. <clears throat> so I'm favoring him. Not to say that Quas is not going to contest. Uh, Quas actually takes out one of a yeah. takes one of. Uh, Marco's oils on the top side there. You can see by the tanks right now. And then Quas now, whoa, Quas going all the way around, going into Marco's base. Wow. Quas, uh, Marco accepting this. He's he has a war factory over there to defend. He has a sentry gun behind the war factory, little sneaky thing, so and uh, primary building. Marco going down the middle. Quas here to defend, and, and or sorry, Marco going to defend. Marco brings a drone, sentry, and a couple rhinos. We see what Marco can do those those low body situations early on. What Marco can do with one sentry gun, but Marco's attack. Eh, both players just deny those early attacks here. And yeah, I think that's one of those things that players, um, a lot of the spectators and stuff off stream don't really see it, but the map picking. So the loser picks the map, and that's a big thing, right? I mean, when you pick a map, there's a big map pool. These guys know so many different maps. They know their opponents. Marco knows Quas. Quas knows Marco. They know their own strengths. They know their own weaknesses. And um, the map pick is a big, it's a big part of the game. Big part of the game here. And I think, yeah, we've seen yeah. what Marco can do on this one. And the thing is, Qua Marco's not, he's not given the chance to do whatever he wants to do. Quas is forcing him to make these decisions yeah. here that Marco probably doesn't want to do. Uh, Quas coming downfield again, this forcing Marco to primary is building on the back. Third and we saw the attack gun. earlier. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Sorry, no, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So now sentry gun. And so both players just in each other's base, but who, will either of them get much value here? Uh, Marco's two miners stopped mining there for a second. He might have accidentally pulled them, so there's some value there. Uh, other than that, they're kind of just exchanging armies, right? Uh, now Marco yeah. on the other side of the map here, again, losing his army. Uh, Wass on the right side, losing his army. Uh, so when it's all said and done, what do we have? We have three miners here for, four miners for Quas, and we have uh, four miners for Marco, five miners now for Marco. Uh, really nice here. Both of them keeping up with their macro and the back end of things. And that's the crazy part about that. That when you're initiating fighting, tank fights here, tank fights there, uh, split over here. Sometimes we just forget to use your Q tab, right? Like you're yeah. not building any buildings because there's just so much going on. That happens to me so much. So seeing these guys continue producing their uh, buildings and everything while all the tank fights going on, that's like high level shit. Yeah, exactly. And as you say that, Quas over to Battle Lab Tech. Marco now matching. Marco has his radar, so he's building tech as well. Quas ahead on tech. Possibly Dreadnought in the center bay here could get a little potato. bit of value. Let him posture up. Hey, you guys got a potato. What'd you get? Oh, the zombie potato. The zombie potato's fun. Nothing nothing happens. No one gets any money, but zombie potato's fun. Hey, you guys are on the potatoes today, man. Good work in the chat. Ooh. Okay. Quas comes in early here. Uh, he uh, will he be able to get a dread out in time before Marco uh, contests with the squid? He doesn't have a naval yard just yet. No naval yet. yard yet. And, and the desolators. Oh, very nice there, but desolators yeah. nice. Okay, so now Marco in. So so does Quas open squids here? You think? Well, I would have opened a dread just because Marco didn't even have a naval mm. yard yet. So he he's going to be able to snipe at least one oil. I would go for the one in the center, but oh, yeah, okay. He goes for the one in the well, bottom. Can he get there. two? Squid can he is, get two? Can he get two? Ah. Uh, uh, Squid does get him. Uh, Marco on the other side there, he did drone uh, Quas's center miner, uh, forcing Quas to make a depot and repair that. Uh, and it looks it looks pretty even here. Both of them on two war factories. Both of them have their uh, three war factories for Marco actually, and he has a nice sight. Uh, Quas a little bit earlier with the IC though, so he's gonna get that a little bit quicker, which means that Marco's gonna be on 
Quas's side of the base, right? He doesn't want to be facing Quas's IC. Yeah, he wants base, wants to force. Side. Yeah, wants to force a defensive Iron Curtain here, and I think he has the tanks for it right now. Quas doing a good job with the Desolators. Man, both these guys. Um, this has been a very interesting series so far. Both these guys with you know kind of some unique map picks and the and the tech pushes and the now Desolators in the fight now. But Quas just buying himself some time. Iron Curtain coming. It's all about baiting this Iron Curtain, baiting a bad Iron Curtain here, and there's plenty of room to run. And Marco gets his Dreadnought in. Marco gets a Dreadnought, grabs an oil. Whoa. Oh, it took out the refinery, too. Nice value. That was a huge hit. Iron Curtain now, and Marco's tanks get a little bit strung up in those trees. Ah, that's pretty good. The, and the IC tanks are on the front line. Marco's tanks had a hard time retreating through those trees. Definitely slowed him down here. But Marco had a nice tank advantage, so he's not in a bad position. But that was exactly what Quas needed to get himself in the tank back into the tank fight here. Yeah, and here's, uh, well, there's not many oils anymore, so I don't even think that this is going to be a good value. Oh, he has another dread on the top side. Perfect. <laughs> oh, shit. He has shit. another dread. It's going to go to the oil. Oh. Oil goes down. <clears throat> war factory. So that, that's the whole expansion. That's, that's his whole forward expansion yes. now. Oh, he doesn't even, he doesn't take the war factory. Where's this dreadnought going? It's going to go all the way to uh, probably Quas's uh, IC, maybe, perhaps. I don't it's know. It's got to blow his way through the brick. Okay, now it stops with the war factory. Yeah. Oh, Marco's with his IC, so now Quas on the run top side. Uh, Look I think at the Quas bottom side, Marco, huge split oh, on the bottom Marco. side, going to take out the reactor. Yeah, so reactor going to go down, that's going to put the iron curtain down, which is huge right now. See how quickly Quas can get back online. Quas actually, Quas did a decent job on this right side, uh, chasing back, but he's, I think he's a little bit overcommitted. I feel like Marco, Marco pulling back on the bottom side is interesting to me. Uh, oh, he's going to sandwich Quas oh. here. Quas sees it coming and does retreat. Yeah, he needs to save those tanks, does not want to lose that. Oh, and this Desolator going to get value. Oh, doesn't deploy it. Ooh. Oh, no. Man, there's like the, the feeling in my soul whenever a Desolator in the middle of a group of Rhinos gets shot to death without deploying. It's like, <laughs> oh, that was, oh, that he was. Accidentally, oh, he no. accidentally ICs two of Marco's tanks there, but he, he is, is going to get a, a yeah. snipe a couple of them. Marco again gets strung out going through those trees and does get a few. Yeah, Marco has an IC tank in there. Uh, I yeah, feel... this one, this one's over, Ivor. Yeah, it's it's just, it just keeps, get, yeah, just keeps going. Marco can IC, Michael, yeah. Marco can IC that yeah. dread and continue doing it. The dreadnought, yeah, the dreadnought in the bay, and each one of those engagements, Marco, I just feel like just kept building equity, like each time coming out a little bit more ahead. Uh, but the dreadnought, the top naval yard from Marco, man, that's not just rhino, rhino, rhino. That's uh, that's some tactics, some top level tactics. That one with all those oils in the center, uh, it's kind of fun to have such a big map that pulls action towards the center. I'm a fan of that one. So now we got yeah. another wacky map, Pickaxe. It is 3-2, uh, best of nine, so the show goes on, and what an absolute, uh, what a treat, man. This is the whole reason I stream, this whole reason I get out of bed in the morning. It's a goofy little map here to start things off. Yeah, we were talking about this, though, the lifeblood of the game, man, the map makers, uh, Polye and Jalad and Berg and all these guys, other names I'm forgetting, and Snark, the people who keep things fresh and make maps like this, man. Uh, I'll tell you what, Final Alert is not a fun program to use. It's a ton of work, but it is. It's what keeps the game fresh. And the clan ladder as well. Neo and Berg, uh, the other devs behind the scene, putting in a ton of work for that 2v2 clan ladder. Shout out to those guys, man. RA to the moon. There's... Oh, oh. the two engineers! <laughs> Wait! He, even, he was able to get a sentry Wait. gun down. What the hell? <laughs> Wait, what? From the graveyard. So, yeah! <laughs> so both <laughs> players went in. They punched each other in the face. Marco got the oil, but Quas laid down a sentry gun. That's hilarious. And obviously, and Marco, for Marco, Marco should not have been able to get that. Wait, why Why was Marco able to steal that? I mean, obviously, it's on Quas's okay. side. That's really annoying. No, no, that's the thing. That's why I said this This can get wild. Because technically, look at the look at the bottom left, or I guess the left side. You see that oil on the top side, left, top left, kind of, on yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Quas's? Oh, oh, this map's not... Quas fixed... It's symmetrical, but the uh, yeah, but Quas repaired the bridge and then went out to the other side and took out the oil. That was Marco's technically oil to begin with. Usually, there's wacky stuff that happened like this in every oh, game. Oh, this is Marco's oil. Uh, so the one Marco took is actually supposed to be his oil. Ah, I see yeah. now. I see. So Quas was the one being the weasel. Okay, I thought Marco was the one being the weasel. I understand. But the thing is, you can get there before your opponent gets there in most cases. So if you don't start an engineer and go straight downfield and get that oil, most likely your opponent's going to be, he's going to have it. Damn. Yeah. Well, I guess in this case, Quas did get it first, and then Marco took it a split second after. I so, blame Snark for that damn, one. very interesting. Yeah, yeah, definitely blame Snark for that one. Dude, this is like, I'm, I'm like looking at a maze right now. This is, okay, this is goofy. And I like the movie yeah. theater <laughs> for the Statue of Liberty. Okay. And for the sake of uh, uh, who it benefits, by the way, it, that favors Quas a little bit because he spends 500 bucks on yep. it. Uh, well, wait, actually, 
Well, he gets he gets a bonus what? when you capture an oil, you get a bonus right away. What's it's that a five hundred bonus, right? Oh, is it or is one k? Yeah. What? No, it's not. Wait. What it was is one k the... bonus? Is now now I'm con... wait I'm confused. What is, what is the bonus? When you grab an oil, you immediately get a bonus. Thousand. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So I was right. I was right. Oh, so he, so gets... he does get five hundred back. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Okay, so he so, gets his 500 from his uh, engineer and then 500 extra. Oh, Qua and Quas goes super early tech. Quas has a naval yard, a Kirov out. He's got Desos and drones, so he just needs to hold this position and then get value with the Kirov. But oh, Marco's drones clean up his. Marco's drones clean up or uh, clean up the desolators. Marco now with a few tanks going to continue the pressure. Quas. If the Quas, Kirov to fight off the rhinos. <laughs> the, the Kirov is now on defense. Path would be so happy. I hope Path's here right now. Sentry guns. If Quas. If Quas can hold, where's the Dreadnought? Quas is about to go to work right now with this dread with the Dread and the Kirov, and he does hold. And what a wacky! Yeah. Are these guys? Are they specifically trying to entertain us? Are they doing this for us, Ed? Dude, I'm telling you, <laughs> this fucking map it always pro provides some weird ass games. Uh, Kirov comes downfield, takes the refinery out. Does it can take the flak if it wanted to, but I guess it doesn't really want take to. Take off, yeah, it takes off the oil and this and does cut Marco off. Marco seemed to be kind of positioning himself here to try to get value out of this expansion. So does does cut off Marco's uh, Marco's position there. Marco now over to Battle Lab Tech as well. Quas about a year and ahead on the Iron Curtain race. And where's the dreadnought? Quas is going a little bit, bro. I mean, Quas doesn't have a ton of money in the bank. Iron Curtain now matched from Marco and Quas Quas on two naval yards. If anyone's keeping track, the two naval yard from Quas. Oh yeah, he puts the dread on the bottom. Why oh, the dread all the way around. Or... It was a trick, Maybe... Ed. The one in the bay was a trick. It was a red herring. And again, Marco with the conscripts, dude. It is the day for conscripts. Okay, nice. I see there, but oh, Marco with a good retreat though. Marco with a good retreat there. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, Quas needs to be careful here. Ooh. He doesn't want to lose those tanks. And I think if he sticks around a little too long, he might actually lose those tanks here. Oh, and, and, and pretty, yeah, pretty nice unit control from both players there. Nice, uh, that defense there from Marco uh, and reinforcing a little bit better. Marco, or uh, Quas, yeah, Marco does come out ahead there. I'm surprised to not see Marco continue to advance that position. Um, Marco just able to reinforce. Uh, it, it, I don't know if they, they got a good scout, to be completely honest oh. with you. That's something about this map that we don't take care under consideration as well as observers, because yeah. you see that oil, I mean, that building where Marco's tanks are around? That one prevents the player from scouting that area. And you see the bridge on the left side, it never got fixed, so oh. I don't know if uh, Quas ever got around, but he sends a pair drop right down there, right where the... Uh, Miners were, that's how he got his vision now for that dread. Ah, gotcha. So using the, I, you know, I saw a couple offensive pair drops that weren't adding up for me, and that makes sense. Using the pair drops to scout and Quas going to work. Now, Marco at some point did see this, and he matched the naval yard, but doesn't bring the squid, and that dreadnought is feasting right now. Uh, Quas could consider going drones and desos and slowing down this position. He got, he already got a nice, a tremendous amount of value there. Love to see Quas. Quas could consider destroying yeah. that bridge. Now, another, and a dreadnought has, in the center from Quas. Quas just has to go defense yeah. here. Desos and drones, man, slow down this position, but I think he even has the right. Rhinos for it, and the Iron Curtain's ready. Got to be Quas's game here. Oh yeah, the IC yep. Yep. ready for it. Definitely Damn. Damn. Do the final nail on the coffin there. Quas is all over Marco in this map, <laughs> this game specifically here. Literally everywhere right now. The double. He was in the air. He was in the oh, water. He was, was in sick. the tanks. He had everything out. Yeah, and I'm glad you for pointed that. <laughs> For people who just say tanks and dogs, uh, watch this game. Again. Yeah, watch this game. The yellow player is on fire. Quas is on fire. Good job, subs. Good job, Twitch subs. Twitch subs, you guys all have special emotes. If you use, if three of you use a, a sub emote, a single sub emote, it does trigger an effect. You special Twitch subs. You guys are celebrities now. Marco's conscripts, all that's left. That's going to be the game. Uh, yeah, Ed, I'm glad you pointed that out. Oftentimes we forget that. Uh, the players start with a completely black screen. And if you guys haven't played in 20 years, you have to send dogs to scout. And on a map like this, that can be very difficult to do. And oftentimes those late game situations where you find, where you're pulling your hair out and questioning them, a bad scout, they're flying blind. And uh, yeah, Quas, yeah, using the pair drops. Damn, Ed, what a day to be alive. <laughs> like all brand new maps, right? It's interesting to see these guys and how they their yeah. map picks uh, represent who they are and where, how long they've been playing, maybe even, you know? Where I they love come that. From. That's a great point. And you know, it'd be interesting to think about it, Ed. Um, I, I, these guys, I feel like they've been winning their map picks, right? Like, I feel like we've been trading yeah. a lot of points. I mean, there's been, I think, a couple exceptions to that. But yeah, you're right. And we talked about that before, what map picks do. And you're right, so different. Marco going with those standard tried and true. And then Quasa getting a little bit weird. And I love it, guys. I mean, that's what we talk about. I hate to use a David and Goliath comparison here because Quas, again, he's not a name that a lot of people know. Marco's the name everyone knows. Quas is right there with these guys. He just doesn't play as much. He's not around as much. Quas is certainly right there, so the David Goliath metaphor is not great. But with that being said, the story of David and Goliath is not 
David learned how to swing his sword harder. It's the story that David was like, fuck sword fights. I'm going to use a slingshot. And I like that from Quas, very tactical in between games uh, with these map picks, throwing some curveballs at Marco and, and getting some points up. But 3-3, three, three man, and, and again, I shouldn't be taking away anything from Quas because his micro and his standard tactics as well. It's not like he's gotten here with wacky shit by any means. Uh, now, this map, Ed, uh, I forget. It's pretty, there's eight starting oils. Uh, what position do people normally favor on this map? bottom side bottom side has uh, all those buildings there that can help you defend it's a little bit easier to defend uh so before before there was a real real bad uh, oils uh, on the top left one when one oil would blow up the rest of them would blow up which is why a lot of people were oh. like bottom is op op right compared to top but with the new uh map they don't blow up at the same time right so uh it's not as one-sided anymore but you still have that bottom protection from all those buildings a little bit easier to defend if anything so they still have somewhat of a an advantage in my opinion yeah and this was uh this is a map you're gonna yeah the early tech so battle labs already out we're at the two minute mark uh naval yard now from marco uh so marco's naval yard right here the dreadnought will be coming quas doesn't have a naval yard uh Qua, but quas i feel like quas could even like flat cannon here to deal with oh he's, he goes naval yard oh and in the forward cure off from quas Oof, this one's gonna get interesting. Hey, you guys you yeah. guys triggered a hype tank. I'll tell you what, that was about the perfect hype tank redemption. I was just getting this funny feeling. I was like, God, what do we need? Hype tank, you guys nailed it. Okay, both Kirovs now, the Dreadnought Ooh. immediately squitted. Squitted, oh, we need a better word immediately. for that. Immediately. Okay, and now another Very naval yard for Quas. Couple flak, okay, and again, using the, using the conscripts to get a little bit of a scout in. This is another one of those maps where you're not gonna get a good scout. Um, I mean, almost impossible. Uh, Kirov. Yeah, yeah. Kirov coming, gonna get so one oil. Marco's Kirov doesn't get anything. Quah, so, yeah, I mean, in, in, in these games, I mean, we've seen how close these games can be. Little stuff like that, early game certainly makes a difference. Um, wow, very nice by Quas there. Heads up play as well on the naval yard there. I'm not sure if you noticed, but that dread was squidded, like you said, uh, by Quas. Uh, and Marco had a squid right next to the, the dreadnought trying to go against that squid once it got oh. cleared, right? A quas put a second squid there to defend. So as soon as the dread got down, it was two v one, two squids from quas against one of uh, Marco. So force Marco to build build another squid inside the water. It's those little things sometimes, dude, because then you can things. just build another dread. Yep, yep, little things like that. Your squid battles, and that's why it's um, man, and that's why it's it's difficult to appreciate. And little things like that in a game like we've seen today, razor thin margins that can make a big difference. So the bridge is repaired from quas. He comes across with rhinos. Needs to be careful. His reinforcements are late. Uh, Marco there to defend. Quas is out tanking. Oh, Quas, both Iron Curtains ready. So this becomes an interesting little, we call this the Iron Curtain Dance. A little bit of an Iron Curtain Dance as Quas brings out a nuke. Uh, Marco brings out a nuke as well. Both players I see. And what was, there was this battle in the Civil War, right? Where where both both ships were ironclad and they shot cannons for three hours. No one got hurt and then they went home. That's what we're seeing here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, that was really nice. There, Quas did he get a little bit of value, though. He did he did snipe an oil at least. That Marco got nothing out of that. He could have almost got. I'm surprised he pulled back. Well, he could have probably got that last oil, maybe pulled off just a second early. But little positions like that can be tricky if your IC goes down a second early. Another squid. Look at the squids battling. Best effect in the game. Um, that's the whole reason I'm here. The squid battles. <laughs> Yeah, so Marco wins that squid battle on the bottom side. He definitely needed it because the bridge is repaired now. So if he lost it, he was going to have to build another naval yard in the bottom side because he doesn't have a naval yard down there. And the squid is would be blocked from the, from the bridge right now. Yeah, interesting, interesting. And you guys, uh, so my layer bottom right, it can only support three super weapons because uh, I forgot to make it do four. And so anyway, the both nukes are out and we do have uh quas with a four second advantage on his nuke right now both players have iron curtains and nu and nukes out okay so desolator in the top zone locking off that that top zone from quas so he can focus on this bridge the bridges are so scary right if the bridge gets destroyed while you're attacking you can lose your whole army not oh <laughs> yeah look at that ic oh but marco immediately matches it that was a beautiful one from quas got every single tank got them all lined up that was nice but Marco matches it, and again, we have this ironclad battle here. Uh, Marco doesn't get the War oh. Factory. <laughs> oh, he doesn't get any value, and instead loses a couple tanks on the retreat there, and the squid battle on the backside of yep. things there. Just, oh, he gets veteran. Veteran, that means he's going to be uh, heading the other squids a little bit faster. Ah, heading, the veteran know. squid. Yes, the veteran squid. The elite squid. Who knows what happens when one goes yep. elite. Kirov sneaks in. Bottom right. Little, yeah. 
little snipe on oh. the airport there. Yeah, so Mark's gonna lose the airport now. No Quas uh, drops for him. And Quas nickel and diming, nickel and diming value right now. And and in these games, that's how you do it, inch by inch, um, to to take down a player like Marco. You know, oftentimes you can't rely on him making one big mistake. It's little value wherever you can get it. We saw that Kirov grabbed the War Factory. Um, you know, grabbing that airport, little stuff like that makes a difference. And the nukes are coming out. Here's nukes. the thing. The nuke from uh, Quas can land on the bottom oils, and it can take out all of the oils in one oh. nuke, right? Uh, where can Marco land his uh, nuke? He might take three out if he sends it toward maybe. the where the rhinos are. Yeah, maybe right here. That... Oh yeah, I was gonna say right there. Yeah. Oh, okay, so so he gets four oils. Oh, Marco oh, he does, does get him as well. Yeah, Marco and, and Quas okay. did sell that warfare, that expansion. He knew he's gonna lose it, and um, what an interesting kind of lake in here. I seize those drones. Ooh, so Marco uses his IC on the top side for a couple drones. Now Quas attacking with his IC. Marco and Quas. Wait, what's happening on the top right? Mark is Quas sent a bunch of tanks out there and he's desolating himself. They're all blowing up. Wait, they're all blowing up individually. Why? I don't okay. know what he. There, there was a lot of tanks there, dude. There was a lot of tanks there. And Marco has these drones on the top left that I was questioning seem to be feasting as well. What exactly? So Quas Quas had an uncontested IC attack bottom left. Then, then must have caught that he had misclicked top right, so that's why he probably pulled off that attack. But what exactly happened up there? He brought 10 tanks to deal with a paradrop? No, Marco doesn't even have a paradrop. I think he might have sent tanks back so that his uh, his other tanks didn't get droned, right? Because I the IC drones were going to come out. Usually a lot of players, they separate their tanks, right? So that right. they don't all get droned. So I think he just sent them to oh. the back just to kind of stay away from the drones. But he put them right on the desolation and they all started blowing up. He forgot about them completely there. And then not only did he lose those tanks, but it threw him off his attack. Again, Marco used his IC offensively. Quas was, was coming over the bridge IC and then had to retreat out of it. Now Marco with a nice IC and Quas just eating punches right now um not looking good oh and and marco oh and that you know marco a lot of his ic against uh, against paradrops i'm sorry what the fuck oh. is going on in this game here wait what oh my he god was it was the same paradrop the that got the airport the same paradrop that got the airport got back and grabbed the ice oh, it might be actually it was they came i saw afk bottom left for a while now the ic and, and the defensive ic from quas to save the war factory that is his last war factory multiple miners afk now he has this one desolator in charge with defending his base does he have a four he has four shield oh sorry a red alert red alert yeah red oh wow i'm out of this stream <laughs> yeah I'm get out of jail free cards yuri's revenge noob <laughs> Uh, again, yeah. Yeah, regular Blitz and Yuri's Revenge have four shields, not Red Alert 2. I don't need to tell you guys that. You guys all know that. And Marco. Wow. Ah, I really thought Quas had that into the mid game there. Um, yeah, he was out tanking for sure. He he had a sh so many tanks there. And and we always we always talk about, God, uh, who who is going to win the games? Usually the player that makes the least amount of mistakes. In yeah. this game, there were so many mistakes that I saw. Wow. There were too, way too many. They spawn pointing a specific direction in a France versus France battle. Um, that can be huge. Who has the advantage here, Ed? I I don't Corners. know. I think the cannons. I think the cannons uh, aim toward the bottom right. If I'm not wrong. I know it's bit, so. We've yeah, seen so right? many cannons be built, and for some reason, so uh, someone's saying Quas. They point to the top right. They aim top <laughs> left. Everyone says something different. <laughs> yeah. No, okay, he meant top right. Yeah. So top right. So they're saying that it's going to aim toward the top right. So advantage for, advantage uh, which, for Quas here, possibly. Or, uh, oh, if, wait. If Quas goes toward the left side, it might kind of help him. Dude, this is like top level Spartan tactics. Like, you have to try to circle the battlefield to fight with the sun behind you so the sun is in your enemy's eyes. That's what we're talking about right here. <laughs> um, yeah. And what a wacky game. You know, it's one of those things as well. Like, to be able to, like, pivot buildings before you build them, little stuff like that would make so much sense. But it's kind of fun that we have to work with these old things. Like, it's kind of funny. Like, little stuff like that, there is, it adds some kind of nuance and color to the game. Um, but, yeah, small map here, guys. Both players playing France. If Marco wins this, he takes it home. If Quas wins it, we're burning a barn. Um, either way, probably this has to be one of the best matches I've ever streamed. Um, I'm, this is, I am, Ed, I am so glad you are here. I would be screwed. I would be so screwed by myself. I would have missed so much shit. We would have had a mutiny on our hands. Both players taking the oils. Almost time. Yeah, they're, they're, they're on it right now. Oh, man. this they're Rocky. This, the Rocky's going to try to take out the engineers. It kills one I engineer. Take out one. All right. That's it, good. Hey, I like, that. I like that. I like that from Marco. I think that's a great heads up move. 
yeah, he's falling asleep with his other engineers. Though. Oh, there you go. Takes the uh, takes the oils now. So both, well, Marco taking. Oh, forcing a Patriot missile on the left side there kills. Oh, it went low, went low power before he killed the second one. Hey, forcing a Patriot missile. Those things suck power. They're expensive. Um, I, I like that. I love this Rocketeer from Marco. I think that just proves who Marco is as a player. Um, I, I love that. Pillbox from Marco top right? Did you expect some shenanigans from Quas maybe? maybe? Oh, so Quas, maybe. Quas gets down and grabs the oil, so it does go and get it. Um, uh, and uh, Kian, Kian with the raid. Kian with the raid. The Octo Kid with the raid. Thanks, Kian. You guys are just in time. Nice, uh so far, so good. It looks both of them are kind of identical at the moment. Both have their oil secured on the right side, left side, and they both are on six miners at the moment. Uh, Marco already with uh, some extra power plants. Of course, you're going to need those. Uh, La yeah. Quas on two power plants at the moment. Ba He's going to need more for sure. He went, he went battle lab. Bat this is not. This is not. This is not meta. I mean, this is not a standard line here, right? For To go France on this map and then go early battle lab. It's the exact opposite, well, right? Taking power, taking yeah. money. What to both to, of them are going lab? Wait, what? So Ed, what? Talk me through it. They want. They're. Are they not? Well, Marco's definitely preparing a cannon walk. Huh. It's interesting. Yeah. Not yeah a, well, they're going chronosphere? to distance here. We got some. Yeah, the chronosphere, chronosphere might be actually pretty fucking good. Yeah. Do you know dropping. what you can do with the chronosphere? Shenanigans. Yeah. yeah. Quas and Quas, nice little bundle of rock. He's gonna get up and grabs that oil. Marco really slow on the repair. Marco, a couple of Marco's rockies coming over. They're gonna lose that rocky fight as well. So yeah, that opening. Someone asking who got value there. Certainly Marco in the early. Uh, f it killed one of Quas's engineers. It slowed him down from grabbing the oil. It made him build a Patriot missile. A little bit of value there for yeah. sure. And so Quas going prism tanks. Marco going mirages. And both these guys, right? And that's what it takes at the top level. You you go on a small map. You build. You go France. But then these guys, but then they deviate. They mix things up. They're not one-trick ponies, man. They're not just going to aimlessly cannon walk. They got a few tricks up their sleeve. It was a false cannon walk. They had never even wanted to build cannons. Ooh, Quas' Rockies <laughs> not in that fight very well. Marco just more hands-on up there. Does win that fight, although Quas had more Rockies. Um, Quas, more important things going on. Prism Tanks and Grizzlies. Uh, naval Yard now for Marco. Yeah, that has to be a defensive naval yard because he can't get downfield if he ba he builds an aircraft carrier or anything. Uh, yeah. Usually, you're you're stuck on that little corner there. So yeah, so and uh, again, so Quas Quas getting more value with his Rockies. Uh, now a naval yard. Oh, and another naval yard for Marco, uh, as yeah. Quas matches. Now the Chronosphere uh, dropping prisms into your opponent's base is always nice on a map like this where there's water. You can also use um. Uh, you can also grab your opponent's tanks, drop them in water. Definitely viable as yeah. well. Uh, what, what's it? Well, what in is, this in, yeah, go in ahead. this situation, something wacky that you can possibly do, uh, but it, it doesn't seem like it's going to happen. At least not this Chronosphere because it's about ready. But you can take an MCV, a second MCV, deploy it when oh. you chrono it, and build a cannon right at your opponent's oh. base with some with some uh, prism tanks to defend as well, right? Of course. Holy shit! You're blowing my mind. I love that. Oh, chrono the MCV. Okay, prism tanks in. In the very back of the base, give him some nice range. Marco a little bit slow to respond. Yeah, nice value there. Nice value for sure. Huge value. Yeah, taking out the Chronosphere. That oh, we got the Chronosphere. Ah, yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, you got the Chronosphere. I missed that right away. I was. Uh, yeah, so we got the. That is. Yeah, very. And now the Rockies in. No anti-air here. Marco needs to get his Rockies back. Quas, nice hit and run with those Rockies. Now Quas gonna pull back, maybe play some defense here. I think he knows he's gotten so much value. Marco has to push here, uh, and Quas has to defend. It's simple as that. The Rockies from Marco go in front. They're taking out the Prism tanks. Quas's Rockies getting value as well, but Marco still with a lot of Prisms that come through. Quas's Rockies doing the oh. work right now oh. for him. Destroys all of Marco's army, and that was literally Marco's only push yep. of yep. What, what he was going to survive with. <laughs> the Pro Finals, 4-4, Marco and Quas, the Goat and the Death Robot, were burning barns. Best of nine, it all comes down to this. A quick reminder, guys, again, redalert2.com is the place to be. If you want to sign up for the tournaments, you can join the Discord, hang out with the community, figure out how to play online. You can check out the YouTube, you can check out the Twitch. Of course, you can donate. All the money that comes into the stream does go back into the stream, goes to next month's prize pool. Every month, I give out $500 in prizes. So all the money that comes in helps me do that. Uh, all the sponsors who have helped us get here so far, I appreciate it. All you guys who support just by liking, commenting, sharing, all that stuff's free for you. I appreciate you guys as well. All right, to the moon, boys. More people watching, playing, and streaming. Red Alert 2. Ed, divide and conquer. We're here. What do we know? How you feeling? Well, I'm surprised Marco picked this map. It's a straightforward standard map, right? With no, no shenanigans, no naval yard, no uh, crazy stuff, no stealing oils, just straight up 
dogs and rhinos. <laughs> That's what we're going to be seeing in this map here. And Marco's, I, fe I felt like Marco's uh, pick was going to be Stormy Weather. That's another one that he's really strong that normally he picks against like top players when he's trying to win, of course, right? Yeah. Uh, Ah, yeah. It's Interesting kind of, pick by him, to be honest. It's kind of a, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a bit of a flex, right? Like you know, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like someone, ch someone challenges you to a duel, and they're like, oh, you want a fist fight, and then you're like, no, pistols. You know what I mean? It's like, let's go, let's go heavy. Like he, like Marco doesn't want to take home the final point with any shenanigans. He wants to do it with dogs and rhinos. You know, just simple in his face, rock and roll style. Uh, I like it. I like well, it. Nice he drum. needs to be careful because Quas is. He, his tank control is super deadly, yeah. and uh, we saw him. We saw we, actually most games that Marco ended up losing were due to that, <laughs> due to tank control uh, situations where this Quas has had the better unit control there with the fodder in the front, with every everything that he spammed, just a little bit ahead when it came yeah. down to things. We've actually yeah we've seen some absolute masterpieces, in, including potato. the uh, the Grizz hey you guys got a, oh the bodybuilder potato damn that's a hot potato boys. You guys got the bodybuilder <laughs> potato. Nothing for that though. No unicorn. You guys are on it today. That's like our fourth uh, uh, fourth potato of the day. No unicorn potato. It's only a two percent chance. So don't get down on yourselves. Stick with it. Keep the tenacity. Um, yeah. So the yeah, Quas's tank control. You know, Ed. Now that I've been playing the game a little bit more, and if you guys who don't know, I didn't play like the first year I was streaming. I hadn't played in like twenty years. You really start to appreciate like the tank battles when you have your tanks and you're moving them around. It really is this like weird feeling. You start to kind of like feel your tanks when you're engaging, and then you yes. watch these guys. And there's so many little things to it, man. It's crazy. It's just nuts. Yes, yes. There's definitely a feel to things. A lot of times, you what well, you have a huge amount of tanks, right? You're not sitting there counting, calculating. All right, I got 33 tanks. Yeah. He has. 29 i can win it no 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 like you just kind of feel it out right like you're kind of like okay it looks like i have a couple more let me get into the right positioning oh this is not it that's why you see a lot of players dance around a little bit first and they wait for that little opening as soon as you like let your guard down you can push in and then back out or do whatever it is that you need to do but you get that feeling that dance that move that you know you know when to initiate yeah. type of thing and uh yeah it takes some it takes a lot of games uh for you to get that feeling and so when players are like oh teach me tank control uh, yeah, I can tell you more or less what to do, but you're gonna have to experience it yourself with just repetitive games, you know? The feeling, yeah, you have to like, you have to really, and it comes from, like you said, a lot of reps. Quas now on this hill, kind of trying to threaten to pick on some tanks here, but doesn't need to be careful, Mark, we're gonna match. Uh, Quas now repositioning down to the top side. Yeah, and it's kind of, I think when you watch tanks, tank fights too, once you get more used to it, it's kind of like looking at like an abstract piece of art. Like it's not like this is a building, it's a bunch of random colors and you kind of see it. And when someone does something wrong, you're like, oh, you get a bad feeling. And when someone does something right, you get like a good feeling, but it's hard to define. <laughs> yeah. It's not like, oh, he just has three more tanks. There's this like, this like kind of weird little artistic flow to the tank movements. Um, yeah, it's really, well, work of art is the word for it. Here we go, yeah. Marco the aggressor, Quas, Quas going broke. Quas gonna have a slow hard time reinforcing here and he can't spam from his barracks, which is exactly what you want as the defender. Yeah, both players on four war factories. Marco already moved his MCV all the way to the top. Uh, it's a very exposed, very yeah. vulnerable MCV, but he is staying and making, or forcing Quas to just uh, initiate on the bottom side, right? He's forcing Quas to stay around the bottom side, I should say, not allowing him to split up to the top side because honestly, that MCV can go down easily with just a couple tanks. <laughs> yeah, and, and Marco, and what a flex, right? To put his MCV there and be like, do it, send some of your tanks. You send four tanks up there <laughs> yeah. and I will crush you. And that's really what he's threatening right now. Quas sending a, a drone top side. Uh, oh, that, that MCV, another MCV, little micro MCV move there. Uh, Quas brought a, a drone. I guess he was anticipating that move. It does get a minor there, which is annoying. Marco might not be up there i know <laughs> yeah. he built the depot immediately he immediately. was already prepared for it as soon as he saw the drone he was like all right i'm just gonna yeah i'm like the preemptive depot just yeah, i'm like it. i'm like yeah marco here's a chance he gets that as i'm finishing my sentence the depot's out the miners repair and the miners back on the ore uh <laughs> an absolute master class here of of red alert 2. uh yeah so uh yeah quas just with more of a, a base stretch we've seen just different me methodologies here not really one right or wrong the mcv move versus more of a, a standard stretch um but uh, yeah, so Marco, yeah, both these guys, I man. Mean, yeah, they're certainly giving each other respect, and they're not going to do anything reckless. And Marco gets a bear hug. You guys powered up Marco, and Marco now with the bear hug in the finals. I really should have turned that off. What an unfair advantage for Marco. Quas is in trouble. <laughs>
Yeah, this is interesting, man. This is really, really going to be an interesting battle here on the bottom side. Both of them have a similar amount of tanks. Quas, of course, he's become like a dog guru. He, he, His amount of dogs is usually like twice the amount of tanks he has. He tried something on the top side. Marco countered yeah. it pretty easily there. Uh, Marco with a couple tanks up there. Now Quas is going to have to force himself to send more tanks on the top side because uh, if he's not careful here, Marco's on five war factories and he has 4K, so he can pump out those rhinos easily up there. Marco switched so, yeah. over to primary war factory on the top side so he's gearing up on the top side quas has already prepared to split yeah quas's dogs and we've seen right a couple i feel like we've had a couple games where we talked about quas's fodder uh pulling in big and and the big one there is the desolators as well i think marco throughout this series you know not just playing who a player is but who, how a player is playing day to day and today we haven't really seen marco with a tremendous amount of desolators so i think maybe quas very comfortable obviously as soon as desolators get on the field here um well quas would have a lot of a lot of dead dogs um so <laughs> yeah <laughs> But yeah, Marco, neither player willing to, to go off of their of their uh, war factories. And again, that's what the radar, that's the cost, right? You go radar, you start building desolators, it does put you behind on rhinos, and then it really puts pressure on you, forces you to get value out of those desolators. Quas bringing all of his tanks oh, bottom here side. here we go. Oh, it's a, it's a lot of tanks. Now Marco's going to have to do something crazy here. Oh, Quas uh, just going to go, Quas trying to go for a full base trade. This. Drones coming, so Quas going to go blow through the bottom, and 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 he's and Quas over to early drones on the top side. Quas going to try to blow through. Quas splits some of his tanks off. I guess maybe try to go top side up to that MCV. Yeah, this is going to get really crazy here. Uh, Quas does have a lot of drones inside the those drones, rhinos, the but the rhinos are taking out all of the miners. So in, yeah. the, in the grand scheme, oh, and there you go. Marco pulling out those desolators, pushing Quas back, did not oh. let him just run through the bottom side. And at the at the end, he's losing all his miners. So his production uh, is going to be just tough. Up. I mean, if you go and when you go, you can't go all in and then not go all in. Uh, but of course, as I say that, I mean, riding over the Desolators would have been the death of him. He doesn't have any drones in this group to counter those Desolators. And right after I got done saying Marco hasn't been using Desolators this series, they come out absolutely clutch to cut him off. Quas has to reroute to the top side. Quas now converging. Marco's tank's a little bit strung out. Quas oh, with the fodder the advantage. Out. The Desolator comes but out but goes down. Get deployed. The Desolator comes out of that forward barracks but does go down. Quas just going to hold his ground here. He has the higher ground, forces Marco to pull out. On the backside, he's fully droned. Quas has a b bundle it's of drones. Qua this is it, Quas. You can't blunder this. Marco. This is it. He has nothing else. The no reinforcements. <laughs> what you got is what you see, and he's, he's taking Quas this comes fight. Out. Quas comes out. Oh my Huge god! <laughs> by a lot of rhinos there. Marco sells the MCV. Uh, a habit more than an actual tactic. There, not gonna work. Holy Jesus shit, Christ. boys! Quas. <laughs> Oh, and my. Quas does it. He he proved that once again. His tank control fodder, whatever it is that you wow. want to call it, is superior. Wow, and the the best, the best, the best, the best game I've ever streamed. Um, per, I mean, oh my God, he's blundering. I mean, so hard right now. What an absolute. So close. So many, and 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 like we talked about the maps and some of the wacky shit, right? What an absolute show. <laughs> what a show, that man. That was, yeah.